Welcome back, Culturians, and today we're going to talk a little bit of Dismal Disney and all the legal troubles that they've been having, as well as a, uh, a likely investigation by the Department of Justice into something that they haven't even done yet. And it all kind of ties together neatly in a recent history of Dismal Disney lawsuits. So, let's go. But first, a quick reminder, Culturians, yes, we do have a website. We can check out all the amazing merch, which is constantly being updated with special limited time items for both the Vegas meetup and for the Dallas meetup that are coming up in the next few months. Do check out beachplunk, beachpunk.us. I can't even say my own website. But as he wraps up here, just remember, you can get your own hats, shirts. They have polo shirts, golf shirts. They have they have. They have coffee mugs, water bottles, shoes, sandals, beach towels, you name it. So go ahead and check out the site. But onward, let's get into this because sometimes the lawsuits are ridiculous, like this one. The Florida woman sues Walt Disney World Hotel after dangerous water slide injury. For whatever reason, I was under the impression that this was at one of the bigger water parks rather than one of the small little water slides that are located in the hotels area. But hey, regardless, this is probably not a suit that's going to go very far. I doubt there will even be a settlement. This is hard to prove, but it's somewhat serious. And, you know, they have a lot of slip and fall lawyers in Florida. But let's move on to a federal judge dismissing Disney's lawsuit against Florida on the last thing that they could summon that might not be laughed out of court, which was free speech. And yet they were laughed out of court. And they went ahead and have appealed that lawsuit against the uh, the state of Florida over the special tax district, and I imagine they'll lose that one as well. But they have to keep fighting because once they lose this, it's over, and the company will have lost such a substantial amount of value to the shareholders that I think it would be indefensible at that point. Of course, that's not where we stop. In fact, let's go to the fact that they were recently sued for illegal discrimination in casting rules, amongst other things. And because of their forced 50%, characters must come from underrepresented groups. Well, the NPR actually goes into this story and talks about the new white man discrimination lawsuit that hits Disney after diversity announcement. Well, They've had a, demer a diversity policy for quite some time. And if you go back to 2021, you can read it. It's still actually up and available. And the problem is it's incredibly discriminatory. In fact, it's based on the idea that it's violating the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, engaging in illegal race, sex, and national origin discrimination. Of course, that was expanded later to a few other things, but this is a real problem for Disney. This is not one that they could get around. This complaint could eventually go a long, long way. And I know American First Legal has been doing this a lot lately, but in hitting Disney with this, it'll hit every other studio. This will be something that splash damages the corporate world across the board in pursuit of the DEI and ESG stuff. But we're not done. That one's just getting ramped up. We've got Disney being sued after a family says that a New York, uh, New York uh, University doctor uh, died from an allergic reaction to a restaurant meal, and they had warned the restaurant staff of all the problems that they would have with dairy and nuts. Well, apparently they ended up ingesting dairy and nuts with that meal and they promptly passed away at the hospital which is sad and terrible this one however i don't think has a lot of merit because if you look at the suit itself it's really should be aimed at great irish pubs and their ownership group since all disney does is provide the location space via a lease they're really just a a, a, a landlord in this case i'm not sure how far this one will go there but it is tied to Disney in that way, so we'll see. They may be able to, quote-unquote, ask out. Now, let's move on because we're not done. This is another one that happened. Disney employees accused the studio of ignoring some uh, intimate uh, attacks 
by an executive. And I think this executive was later dismissed. But the problem is, is that this exposes the company because it seems like it was a long history of these events happening. And of course, you know, you've got lawsuits coming out for that. You also have investors suing Disney because of a fraudulent scheme that was concocted to uh, hide Disney Plus losses, were, which were quite substantial, by having, well, shows and movies be produced by other parts of the company. They then transferred those shows over to Disney Plus to try to hide the fact that there was some cost expense there. This was done uh, during the Chappic era. It may have been done prior to that. That's hard to say. Of course, investors have been suing Disney regularly. This is only one of many, including a suit to seek records and and some other th details on how Disney was conducting business uh, in regards to uh, uh, fiduciary duty and representing shareholders' interests first, which Disney hasn't been doing at all. Of course, now we have the famous one that dropped just about a month ago on February 6th. The fired Mandalorian actress, Gina Carano, sues Disney. Of course, the funding's provided by Elon, which uh, Reuters wanted to make sure they put this way. They didn't even say her name in the headline, but they did say Elon's. Uh, again, this suit is uh, what we call lawfare at this point, and really a win is going to be discovery here. Because I'm not sure you're going to be able to settle with Gina, who has substantial means, and I don't know that Elon Musk will be compelled to push for settlement either because, well, he has ridiculous means. So we got to keep going. We're not even to the story for the day. We're almost there in a story that nobody covered because here on YouTube, if you talk about any of the things uh, regarding the global crisis that we went through for a couple of years, um, that a lot of opinions have changed on over the course of the last few months. The show 911 is 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 being sued, which is Disney, ABC, uh, because Rockman Dunbar is saying that he got fired because he wouldn't acquiesce to certain mandates that were made around that time for a reason that I still can't talk about on YouTube. So. I'll remind you, make sure you're subscribed down below. Let's grow the channel to a point where it's harder to get rid of me. If you're not subscribed, like about 60% of you, I would truly appreciate I earn it today because we're about to hit pay dirt. Here we go. This guy, Pete Dystad, I think that's how you say his name, is the CEO of the upcoming Disney Warner Brothers Discovery Fox Sports streaming service. That's right. And they use Disney as kind of a catch-all. But apparently this guy has worked for not only Apple and Hulu, he's now going to be in charge of this, which hasn't even been fleshed out yet. The ink is probably still dry on this agreement, and it upset everybody in the known world that actually sold their sports rights, like the NFL and the NBA and, well, I guess uh, Major League Baseball. This is kind of a rights sharing agreement that will create a sports focused streaming product between all of the available services that these companies have, except not all of them. The most desirable things will still be stuck over on one service or another, but that's an entirely other conversation. When this story dropped yesterday on March 15th, early in the morning, I didn't have a chance to cover it. So here we are now to talk about the fact that, uh, We've got a guy to run it. And the comment around it by Dystad is, this is an, in whoa, this is, sorry about that, guys. This is an incredible opportunity to build and grow a differentiated product that will serve passionate sports fans in the United, uh, in the U.S. outside of the traditional pay TV bundle. Um, I'm excited to be able to pull together the industry-leading sports content portfolios from these three companies to deliver a best-in-class service, whatever that means. Have you ever heard so many things strung together that actually don't mean there's going to be any quality results? Well, yeah, because you've been seeing a lot of Disney PR lately, but this is just more of that. Uh, Dystad recently worked, yeah, 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 y
Uh, so the service, here is the best part. The service, whoops, we did it again. The service was announced in a shock move just last month with plans to stream channels like ESPN, TNT, CBS, and Fox in a quote-unquote slim bundle that is sports-centric focused. The name, pricing, and other details of the service are still to be determined. Of course they are, because they aren't even real yet. And yet they announced this, Disney announced this, to make sure that investors were excited about a phantom thing. And Phantom Thing is going to come with some problems. Why? Well, you probably know this already, but Fubo TV sues Disney, Fox, Warner Brothers over sports joint venture. And for good reason. They have some good complaints here. And they feed right into antitrust, which yeah, that's going to get us where we absolutely need to go here in a moment. So they're suing them uh, for, um, uh, let's see. Extreme suppression of competition in the U.S. sports-focused streaming market. Because Fubo TV, in order to access sports, has to pay quite the premium in order to serve them up on their service. Now, the sports streaming platform Fubo TV is suing Disney over the recently announced JV. Uh, and I already read that statement. So the joint venture announced earlier this month aims, uh, month aims to offer viewers a new way to access marquee live sports. And it's slated to roll out this fall. Okay. Disney has yet to be profitable with Disney+. Plus. It could be argued that Warner Brothers Discovery is closer because of what, hap what came in with Discovery. And it's, there's a decent chance that Disney could get over the hump by the time they actually fully own Hulu. Which, believe it or not, they still don't. So this is another, yet another product that they're going to try to distribute digitally so that they can claim more subscribers, which may just be the same subscribers, so that they can sell sports to people in a more complicated way. And maybe, just maybe, this does what ESPN 3 or Plus is, or whatever they call that. Um, it'll do about that, which to date, after the launch oh so long ago, is only about 24 and a half million subscribers, not quite 25 yet. And you don't get much with that. Of course, you don't get much with uh, ESPN these days other than political programming. But you're going to start to see people pull away from all of these different products. I'm not sure that combining these three particular rights holders together is a win either, but what do I know? So they stated that these horizontal competitors are colluding to create a joint venture that will cause substantial harm to competition and consumers. All of those words are aiming for an antitrust suit. And as such, this is the icing on the cake. The U.S. is going to scrutinize the Disney Fox Warner Sports streaming deal, according to Bloomberg Law. Well, <laughs> the, the government made a statement about it, too, but that's fine. And this came out, of course, well, a month ago, on February 16th. And the U.S. Department of Justice aims to scrutinize a sports streaming platform planned by Walt Disney, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery over concerns it could harm consumers, sports leagues, and rivals. It will. The Justice Department will examine the terms of the deal when it is finalized. Oh, I think the deal was finalized, but the, the offerings certainly aren't. And I have to tell you, those sports leagues that we mentioned aren't super on board with any of this, but we'll keep going. So the trio have a broad portfolio of professional and collegiate sports rights, which span the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, Major League Baseball, FIFA World Cup, and college competitions. Well, they also have a lot of access to uh, other sports as well, but like hockey, but we'll see. So the app would provide non-exclusive, non-exclusive access to a collection of television sports networks, including ESPN, Fox Sports 1, and TNT, as well as content that is streamed. My goodness. So here we go. And this is commentary. I think it obviously raises serious competition issues and antitrust issues when you have the largest players in the inline distribution sports getting together and jointly launching a new service, said Seth Bloom, 
antitrust lawyer with Bloom Strategic Council in Washington and a former general counsel of the Senate Antitrust Subcommittee. So if you don't think there's some juice here, if you don't think that the Department of Justice is taking this seriously, well, they are. And why does this matter? Because as all of these things start to come together and people are conspiring to limit people's access, well, except through exclusive agreements on given services to, again, things that used to be available to the public for free on linear commercial and broadcast television, you start to irritate the constituents of these government folks. And, you know, as much as they ignore the constituents mostly in Washington, this would be an easy way to get a win, an easy way to take down the big guys in the eyes of, well, Congress and potentially the president. And those types of wins they have to take. They also have to start limiting their competition because the media companies are becoming competition for the government. I know that sounds ridiculous, but one of the reasons you knock down cartels is for this very reason. So they do not exceed the authority or power of the bodies that were set to regulate them. And in this case, that would be government. So anyway, the DOJ will likely look at the competitive implications uh, of that and whether other companies that wish to provide this service will be foreclosed from the market. And they would be. They would be. And this is a wonderful, wonderful comment here. Um, FUBU, a sports-focused streaming service, called for scrutiny of the new joint venture as it was announced, saying that the significant market share, reportedly controlling 60 to 85% of all sports content, would be bad for every consumer in America who should be concerned about the intent of this joint venture and its impact on fair competition, which I can't argue with. And we also have an interesting point in time that all of this is happening when the ESPN sports crew for college football is now going to be participating in a newly renewed, reinvigorated uh, football franchise for the NCAA, which a lot of the games are controlled by ESPN as well and the networks that they operate. On that note, I find this amazing. Disney has found a way to be involved in every aspect of their business. I mean, every aspect in lawsuits, hotels, theme parks. They're being sued for a wrongful injury and a wrongful death not that long ago. They're being, they're being attacked on the studio side from their actors um, and from just their employees because of the, their ignoring harassment issues. They're being attacked uh, or sued for all of these reasons, even from their own investors, whom they have harmed over the course of the last several years, over their lack of fiduciary duty, uh, loss of value because of politics. It's insane. And we're starting to see even the internals there at the company fall apart, even their original ideas like the streaming service. And the scrutiny that's going to be placed upon all of their filings recently in order to try to fend off a proxy fight that, uh, while may not be successful, certainly is encouraging them to shift directions. On that note, what do you think? Do you think that Disney is going to continue to expose itself to this, this rate uh, of, of, of lawsuits against them? I mean, a few suits is normal for a big corporation, but this... It's almost daily or weekly anyway. I think I made that joke a few times. But as we recap some of these, and mind you, this is just a few. There are way more. I've covered them here on this channel. You can go through down below in the description or on some of the recommended videos and find them there. But they're, they're in rough shape. Do you think that's going to continue? And finally, do you think that this joint venture sports thing is actually going to come to fruition you think it'll actually be something that they can maintain even if they do start it? And do you think that they're going to have trouble competing with the likes of Amazon and Apple as they try to get their hands on uh, more and more sports content? Good questions all, I think. But I'll leave those questions for you. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, and until next time, see ya. Bye.